My first guest on the program this morning is the Trade Minister, Simon Birmingham, joining us from our Adelaide studio. Thanks very much for your time today, Simon Birmingham. Let's start with the news of these uh, eight children, including, of course, the Sharif children, being spirited away from this refugee camp in Syria. Why was this decision taken? Well, thank you, Tom, and good morning. Look, this uh, decision was taken in the best interests of Australian children. And these are Australian children who had uh, their childhoods ripped away from them by their parents. And these are Australian children who will now, thankfully, get a second chance at having a life in Australia, despite the appalling behaviour of their parents in taking them into a war zone. Uh, and we will work hard, carefully as we have in terms of around the extraction, to make sure that those children and Australia have the best chance of success in terms of their resettlement back here. That's the difficulty, isn't it? The chances they have of actually getting a new life. I mean, without going into detail, perhaps they'll need a, a new name, for example, and also the reaction of the community around them. And if people find out they're going to their school, how safe they're feeling. Well, it is important that we handle this very carefully, and we've handled it carefully to date, and we will continue to do so in terms of the individual assessment and support that will be, provi be provided to these children, uh, and, of course, in terms of the confidentiality that's there. I want to pay uh, tribute to the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade officials, Home Affairs officials and partner agencies around the world who've helped to date, uh, but also acknowledge the media in terms of responsible coverage of this issue to date and the work that needs to occur from here in terms of protecting the privacy of these children. They are children. Yes, you know, the oldest is now mm. around the age of 17 uh, and has been through things that most of us could not possibly imagine. But they're Australian children and we should do our best by these children and we are going to do so. Wanted to get your thoughts on talk of Cory Bernardi coming back to the Liberal Party. Should that be something canvassed by the South Australian Party? Well, Tom, I welcome uh, Corey's comments about his support for the Morrison government and desire to see the Morrison government succeed. Uh, I look forward to Corey's cooperation as a crossbench senator. Uh, uh, in the end, Corey chose to leave the Liberal Party several years ago. That was his decision to set up a party. Uh, uh, the party itself didn't go so well, uh, but I look forward to working with Corey as a crossbench senator into the future and to his support for the Morrison government. Not as a Liberal senator, though? Well, Corey chose to leave the Liberal Party. Uh, he sits uh, as an Australian Conservative senator. Uh, apparently, uh, the party now is being wound up. Uh, he made uh, that decision. Uh, the party in South Australia has had uh, a real period of success and unity over recent years. Uh, we've, of course, won the state election here last year, uh, the first time that we've won uh, a state election in South Australia since 1997. So uh, we have seen true success, unity, in the federal election, we saw uh, the second largest swing of any state towards the Liberal and National parties happen here in South Australia. We held all our lower mm. house seats. We won three Senate seats for the first time in several elections in terms of a half Senate election. Uh, we are in a good position and I'll make sure we do everything we can to preserve that success and unity into the future. All right, it sounds like it's a no from you. Uh, let's talk about the tax cuts and Labor inching, perhaps towards a position of supporting them. Now, you're acting Treasurer, so if they take this position uh, while you're in this role, are you going to take all the credit? <laughs> uh, Josh Frydenberg and Matthias Cormann have done incredible work in making sure that the arguments in favour of our tax reform plans are well understood. Now, this is about tax relief for hard-working Australians and reform to make sure our income tax system is more globally competitive uh, and incentivises people to work hard into the future. So, you know, first and foremost steps to provide more support for low and middle income families. So, tradies, teachers, others who are out there who can expect to see an increase to their tax return of around $1,080 coming back into their pockets as a result of our changes uh, this year. Now, that's going to be a big mm. lift in terms of household budgets, a real help to them, uh, and, of course, a boost to our economy, which, given some of the global headwinds, has been recognised as important. But the long-term plans around this are really critical as well, because without them, and we've seen evidence that our tax rates in Australia will be completely uncompetitive against other English-speaking countries. Uh, we've right. seen economists, banking governors and others indicate just how critical it is to have that type of plan. Uh, and this is the time now 
uh, for Anthony Albanese to show that he's actually different to Bill Shorten, that he's willing to support tax reform and tax relief for hard-working Australians. And if he doesn't support it, and support it in its entirety, well, it will show just how tone-deaf he and the Labor Party are from the election result just five weeks ago. So that's one part of Scott Morrison's speech today. He's delving into some other areas, including just a signal that there could be something within industrial relations. Isn't this the, the sort of thing you usually outline before election? Why is it coming after the election? Well, all Scott is talking about is the productivity agenda that's important today. So uh, he's spending a lot of time talking about the need to get that tax reform through and, uh, and of course, you know, that can be guaranteed today if the Labor Party stop messing around, step up to the plate and commit their support for tax relief for hard-working Australians. Uh, Scott, today as Prime Minister, will also be talking about uh, the need uh, to address red tape issues across the economy uh, and, yes, mm. the need to make sure that we look at any productivity areas uh, that we can make our IR system more but, efficient. But just on, yeah, now, well, just on that IR aspect, is, though, though, if I could ask, Minister, because, again, yeah. this is something that he's outlining just after the election and saying, business, make the case, bring the Australian people with you. That's strange to make just after an election. Why not do it beforehand? Well, he's making sure as well that he frames all of the conditions, first and foremost, to make sure uh, that workers benefit from any changes, and that the economy benefits overall from any changes. Uh, what we want to make sure is that life is better for hard-working Australians with lower taxes and with better job security, uh, with the prospects of mm. higher wages through a stronger economy into the future. You know, there are motivators. Now, what we want to do to make sure that happens is to get the economy humming along as strongly as we can in Australia. Uh, we face these international pressures of global trade wars, but what we can do in Australia is ensure that there's less red tape. Uh, that where possible, uh, union lawlessness is stamped out. And so that's our first priority when it comes to IR reform, to bring the ensuring integrity legislation to the parliament, uh, to get that debated quickly. Again, the Labor Party, if they were serious about dealing with lawlessness in unions like the CFMEU, they would support that legislation. That's what they ought to do. Come on board, support that legislation, just as they ought to support tax cuts for hard-working Australians. Uh, because, you know, Bob Hawke, uh, Bob Hawke, what did he do with the BLF? Well, he ensured the BLF were put out of business because of lawlessness. You've got comparable behaviour happening in terms of the CFMEU, uh, and yet Labor are only right. wanting to potentially maybe deal with one individual rather than with the lawlessness of the entire union okay. that's, uh, that's happening there. Y you're... Um your area of trade is being mentioned again by Scott Morrison, obviously talking about the trade war going on between China and the US. Is there any direct criticism of the US? Because if you talk about this tariff war, if you like, to go right back to basics, did the US start it? Tom, uh, we share some of the US concerns about uh, issues in terms of ensuring the protection of intellectual property, uh, and particularly around technology matters, uh, ensuring that you don't have unfair subsidies that, uh, that impact upon the operation of market economies. Uh, but we also think that unilateral tariff measures are not the right way to go about uh, addressing these issues, that you need to work hard in terms of changing uh, behaviour of other partners, using the mechanisms of the World Trade Organisation, building global cooperation where possible. So, uh, look, there are issues on all sides that we would like to see progress mm. on. We've been very clear but it, about but it, I guess that, we're nearly out of we time very directly. Are the Trump policies possibly hurting Australia and the economy in the near future or even now? Well, a trade war between the US and China uh, will dampen growth. We already see projections in terms of a downturn in the rate of growth of global trade and that that is projected to have a downturn in terms of the rate of growth uh, of global economies. Right. So the impact of this sort of trade uncertainty is there already. What we want to see is unfair subsidies addressed as well as protectionist measures avoided uh, and to get back onto the path that has provided the world and particularly our region with such enormous opportunities over the last few years. You know, more than 800 million people are estimated to have been lifted out of poverty thanks to the growth of China and the Southeast Asian region and that growth has happened because economies have opened up to the world increased their trade, uh, and that has provided benefits in those economies, but also here in Australia too. All right. Trade Minister Simon Birmingham, always appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tom.